Hi guys, uh, my name is Kevin and I'm an undergraduate at the Diamandis lab um, and today I'm going to be talking about an interesting topic that has to do with brain computer interfaces and studies where they're recording um, neural activity with implanted electrodes. So specifically, I'm going to be talking about how it's possible that sticking bare electrodes into brain tissue can give you detailed information about what single cells are doing. Um, and this is an interesting question that I've always wondered about whenever I hear about these studies or proposed brain-computer interfaces, such as Elon Musk's Neuralink. Okay, so to figure out how we can obtain information about what single cells are doing, we need to first know what kind of neural activity we're talking about. So to understand this, we just need a very basic overview of what an action potential is. Under normal conditions, the inside of a neuron is about 70 microvolts more negative than the outside. This occurs because of uh, different concentrations of various positively charged ions inside and outside the cell. Uh, and then when the neuron receives sufficient excitatory neurotransmitters from other neurons, it will trigger what's called an action potential, which is a sudden influx of positive charge. This causes this neuron to then release its neurotransmitters. Now, all the details of how this occurs aren't important for a discussion, but what is important is that there is this sudden change in electrical potential between the inside and the outside of the cell. So what's also important is that this sudden change in electrical charge has very distinct characteristics. So this is what the action potential of one neuron might look like. But there isn't just one neuron around each electrode. There would be many millions of neurons along the length of these electrodes. So what each electrode would be recording might look something like this. And this is a complex mix of all these action potentials going on at the same time. So this method, called spike sorting, attempts to identify the action potentials in this data and then attribute all the action potentials back to individual neurons that they came from. So this is a pretty monumentous task. And the first step is to try and separate out the spikes from the background noise. Uh, this is done using an estimate of standard deviation um, and then basically just taking all the spikes that are above a certain threshold. And then once the action potentials or spikes are identified, then comes the task of trying to attribute these back to individual neurons. So starting with this raw data, this is actually a pretty monumentous task. If you had to come up with a way how to do this, what might you try? We can come up with a way to do this that relies on two things. First of all, these electrodes aren't planted uh, just one at a time. They're actually implanted in a square grid. And second of all, we know action potentials coming from the same neuron are coming from the same place. What this allows us to do is to use the grid of electrodes to pinpoint where the spikes are coming from. So if we see a spike simultaneously appear very strong on one electrode and very weak on uh, several other electrodes, we can conclude that it's closer to the first one. And we can try and use this to triangulate the position of where these spikes are coming from. So this spatial information is very useful, but it turns out it's not enough. Now we can try to use the actual characteristics of the spike themselves. Uh, for this we might try something like just the raw amplitude of the spikes, basically saying that spikes of the same amplitude are, might be coming from the same neuron. But how do we know if this is a good characteristic or feature to look at? There could be many other characteristics or features of the spikes that we haven't thought of. There might be combinations of them that work better. And some of these features might be actually correlated or measuring the same thing. So to make sense of all this, we need to actually use a more advanced computational approach. So to find the optimal feature or combination of features, we're going to use the common computational approaches of principal components analysis and k-means clustering. So a uh, principal components analysis can be thought of a way of transforming the data so each axis is a linear combination of the features we started with. Um, importantly, principal components analysis guarantees that all of these axes will be uncorrelated, so they're not measuring the same thing. So when we plot out all the spikes uh, based on their principal components analysis, and remember each axis here is now some combination of features, what we tend to see is that some of them might end up closer together. And what this represents is that we might suspect that they're coming from the same neuron. So once they're clustered together, we basically can assume that each of these clusters are coming from one neuron. Obviously, errors can occur where multiple neurons end up being one cluster, or wrong spikes end up getting grouped together. This kind of gives you a general overview of what the process is like. So to summarize, we started trying to separate out these spikes based on their location, but it turns out that wasn't enough. Then we started using characteristics of the actual spikes themselves. 
But in order to best choose which characteristics to use, we use some of these more advanced computational approaches. So this is the standard way of processing this information from large implanted electrode arrays. And this is the way it's been done for a long time now in a research setting. So what's different about some of these proposed brain-computer interfaces like Elon Musk's Neuralink? Well, it turns out it's actually just a few improvements to the electrode material, thickness, and implantation method to get better density and better coverage of these electrodes. But the raw signal is going to be the same, and the way of processing it will be roughly similar to what we talked about today. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. Uh, remember of course to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for some of our upcoming videos. We have uh, Neuroscience ABCs coming up, where we're going to run you through some uh, Neuroscience basics. I'm also going to include a link to a paper describing spike sorting down below. And uh, that's all. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you here again.